Akash. I'm here in the uh, in the library or my office that smells of rich mahogany and many leather-bound books. Uh, just kidding. Here in uh, the basement of the Wilson household, drinking my coffee, getting excited. That's hot. Uh, for for the day. I uh, hope you're having a great morning. Today, I want to talk to you about the thing holding you back in your life and maybe your fitness, um, especially fitness, and it's judgment. And it's a weird thing to talk about in the, the things that hold us back. A lot of the times we perceive or people perceive that uh, it's discipline, it's like my lack of willpower or intensity, but uh, it's the consistent self-judgment that I see that interrupts a lot of people's progress with their own personal fitness. And obviously it affects other things in other relationships in our lives as well. But um, the judgment piece is sneaky because uh, in every phase of your fitness process of your goal setting, your strategies, your tactics, your planning, your efforts, um, it can really be the sneaky, um, the, the, the sneaky uh, monster that gobbles up all the fun, the joy, and importantly, the progress um, and consistency. So let's talk about like what that looks like in um, and how judgment shows up uh, in your in your fitness life. And, and it starts with the goal setting, right? Like <clears throat> a lot of the times we don't know, um, we have uh, uh, errors on our estimation of what's possible, good and bad. Like we don't know, like, how how much of an impact we can have on our health, on our sleep, on our uh, medical uh, or prescription drug use, or how much weight we can lose, or or how fast we can run. Uh, we don't we don't really understand what these things, what our potential is, and so our goals are are sometimes offset, sometimes uh, audaciously high, which is of course possible. But I see also that people uh, set their North Stars low too. They don't fully understand where they're at. So just judging uh, the, you know, what a good goal is or a worthy goal is, that is something that, uh, that can impact your, your fitness journey before you even get started. And, and, and once you have that goal, that you look at the plans and the pieces that you need to put in place to get there in whatever direction you're trying to go, whether it's to feel better, or to improve your performance on something. And uh, a lot of the times when we think about, when, it, when I show people workout programs, plans, nutrition, steps, things like that, uh, people say like, that's it? Like, that that's gonna get me to the, cha that's gonna get me to the promised land? And I think like the idea of, of like, the, the judgment on a plan and struggling to, um, to, to, to believe that small steps can lead all the way up the mountain is a big interruption point. And uh, the, the funny part is, is oftentimes, like I'm the most skeptical or judgmental about things that I, I, I have the least amount of understanding in. Like, I don't know that much about like, um, you know, I'm, I'm financially literate, but I'm not a, I'm not a, finance professional. So I'm often skeptical of a lot of a lot of things that I hear about or read about online as I get, you know, marketing emails for different things. I, I really don't know what people are talking about. And it's it's really easy as I see uh, to not understand all of the the incremental doses that are, are that apply or that build up to a successful plan in the fitness realm and your fitness realm. And uh, and the resistance that we have to taking steps that we think are inadequacy. In fact, um, that is the next point on my list here of judgment is when you are working on your plan. So like you're, let's say you, you set up a program to work out three times a week and you're, uh, you're, you're enjoying it. You're putting in a lot of effort. Um, a lot of times I see people have a really great day. Like they wake up, they get to the gym early, they do their warm ups and the mobilities, have a great workout for 45 minutes or an hour. And then they're feeling really good. And then they, they go for a walk or a run in the evening. So they're, they're doing multiple things per day and they feel really good about it. And what happens is in their mind, they start to say like, okay, that's a hundred percent. That's the standard. And then everything below 100% effort is a failure, is 
not good enough or is inadequate. And that, that little, just that little piece of judgment, that little label that you put on things is 100% standard. That's the, that's the new minimum, you know, it's a new minimum. Uh, that, that inhibits every other day where you don't have time, where you're doing what you can, where you showed up and you didn't even, you didn't feel like going to the gym, you didn't feel like working out, but you still... Uh, showed up and did it, which is a huge success. In fact, arguably more important than the days where you're feeling on fire. And uh, you're, you're, you know, those days become invalidated because the level of effort or input isn't the same as what you're, you know, what you could do on your best day. And that's the, the whole piece is having a sense of a misguided sense of uh, what what a, what an increment is, or what what is a valuable input or piece of effort, because <clears throat> a lot of times we're so literal. Like when we think of a workout, we think of an hour or forty five minutes, right? But what if it's ten minutes? What if you did a nine minute mobility circuit, you know? And you'd had that while your coffee was brewing, and then you got your morning meeting on time, and you got something done that day where you got to work on your joints or your ankles or your knees. See, uh, those little like like re redefining and uh, re re or building up your skill set essentially and, and your competency in uh, in fitness and in exercise is what, uh, you know, your your transformation is really about. And that's uh, that's kind of the piece that I like to talk to a lot about is if you have an outcome that you don't, the, you know, your your body, your life is not where you want it to be. You're just skills you're usually missing. And some of those skills are like, you know, identifying, you know, how to move your body in a, in a productive way, uh, you know, how to prep vegetables, how to uh, plan meals. But they're also like how to uh, go for a walk after dinner and um, just to, to help your digestion and your mental state and get better sleep even if you didn't have time for a workout that day. There's all these little tiny increments and things that you can do every day. If you think about these 1% investments that add up slowly over time, and you have the person that is not judging themselves for how small of an investment they're making, they're doing things every day that move the ball forward. And that's not the whole battle. And there's, there's, there's habits and nutrition, hydration, and there's all kinds of things that have to go into getting to where you want to go. But being able to make those small increments and not judge the, the level of effort allows you to be consistent in the process. Because if you're beating yourself up for you know, every day that you don't do an hour-long workout, that you're a failure or that you're not doing it or you're not doing enough, then that's gonna, uh, you're going to get tired of that. Pro- it's not going to be fun. That's like who wants to who wants to do something and work and try and struggle every day to to get beat up mentally by a bully who to get to get told they're not good enough and that not doing enough and a lot of us are doing that unconsciously while we're while we're working out and trying to make ourselves better working doing the best with what we have so you you iterate you practice you build skills you do things poorly and you develop these habits that lead to uh, improvement on, you know, you're, you're having better workouts, you're, you're being more successful, you're getting more uh, consistency, you're getting more work done, you're getting up on time, whatever the things that you're, that you're doing in, in your day that are your goals, you're executing on those, and uh, performance will improve. But then you're going to have obstacles and setbacks. You're, you're going to have a family emergency. You're going to have a work emergency. You're going to have you know, things that are going to come up to kick you off track. And this goes back to judgment. When you have a setback and it's time to get back on the horse, a lot of times like if you're, you know, you, you forgot your lunch at home, if your idea is it's either all meals are on plan or none of them are and you forget your lunch, well, then it's a zero day. Then that day doesn't count. If your idea is I have to have five workouts in a week and you have a child emergency on Monday, well, the rest of the week is shot, right? You can't get your five workouts in if you have something come up for you that derails you because your idea of success is so specific and limited that it, it's, 
uh, it sabotages the rest of the time, energy, and effort that you could have put in to moving the ball forward. So when it comes to setbacks and obstacles, which are going to happen, which are going to force you to learn new skills and rechallenge yourself, uh, judgment again gets in the way. So you're getting beat up uh, when you're performing and when you're building up your skills, you get beat up on the setback. Uh, and and it, when you're... <laughs> When you're trying to get back on the horse, that's when like you're going to hear that, that that judgment reoccur. And that's really the skill. At the end of the day, when you're uh, going through anything, whether it's a business, fitness, relationships, there's going to be problems. The, pe- the person that gets back on the horse the fastest is going to be the winner because that's ultimately the, the skill that sets everyone apart. People get tired of of getting up, of starting over, of dusting off the gym shoes, of getting back into it, of making one more attempt, of, uh, you know, pl- you know, cooking a meal and having it like turn out like garbage and you have to throw it away or not eat it or eat, you know, wilted broccoli, whatever it is, people get tired of it. And the, the people with the grit, the people with the, the consistency and, the, and the, the track record of success are the people that just deal with it that, that, or even are proud of those moments where maybe they forgot their running shoes when they went on vacation, but they, they, they skipped rope or they, you know, did uh, calisthenics every morning to, to continue to stay in shape while they were traveling so that they weren't starting over literally again uh, when they got back home. So the ability to get back on the horse, the ability to fail at something and not view it as a failure, view it as just a, an example of a skill that needs to, to be developed or practice that needs to be um, sharpened and, uh, and part of a, the imperfect process of success. That is, those are all the things that, that, uh, that successful people do and judgment will inhibit that. So the takeaway is notice when you're judging, notice when you're judging yourself, you're judging others, just notice when ju- your judgment comes into play and and just identify it. And then whether you want to let it go or not, just know that those are those judgments are the things that are keeping you from being successful today and not just in your in your, you know, health and fitness, but perhaps other areas of your life. We all have it. I have judgment. I have uh, irritations. I have I get I beat myself up too. And that's um, that's part of a healthy process is just identifying it and then working around it. All right. Make today awesome. Get out there and crush it. I hope you're having a wonderful, whatever it is. What's today? Uh, It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what today is. Have a great day. Stay gritty. Talk to you soon.